Hey everybody, it's Ron Johnson, and this is Locked On Sports Minnesota, and it's Friday. You know what that means, it's Friday, yeah, it's Saturday, Sunday, what? You know, we're all here, except for Reggie. I don't know where Reggie is right now, but it's snowing in Minnesota on a Friday morning, so we had to call Gabe Henderson. He is on the road right now, but he's still ready to talk about basketball, football? I know Gabe's a hooper, North Carolina's where he's from, we'll get his thoughts on that as well, can the Tar Heels do what they do or will they end up like Kentucky? Cause we just saw Kentucky lose and we'll talk yeah. about more of the brackets being busted, but we got to get into this show. I'm Ron Johnson. That's Sam Extra. We got Julia Daniels joining us as well alongside Gabe Henderson. So let's get the star show started. What are we going to talk about today? Let's get locked in Sam. What you got? I checked the FanDuel Super Bowl odds <laughs> and they were not kind to the Vikings. Where do they sit? And is it a fair assessment? We'll talk about that. And Anthony Edwards now being compared to Michael Jordan from Michael Jordan himself. We'll mm. talk about the comparison between those two. And we all know Quasi and the Vikings front office has been busy this free agency period. What's the grade we want to give him at this point? We're two weeks out from the start of free agency. So how do we grade the Vikings? And I don't know what your brackets look like, but mine, it's smothered. In red X's, we'll talk about how everybody's bracket did on day one and what we're most forward to looking to on game on day two of this NCAA tournament. Again, I'm Ron Johnson. Uh, this is Locked On Sports Minnesota, and it's the Friday Roundtable. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. New customers join the day and get 200 bucks in on bonus bets over your first five dollar bet or more if it wins on fanduel.com backslash locked on that's visit fanduel.com backslash locked on to get started and again i told you guys easy bets to take take the number ones don't take kentucky though because oakland from detroit oakland university in detroit michigan i should have went with them and i i thought calipari could get it done and uh all his nil money did nothing Suit looked nice, but the team could not sustain the three-point barrage of Oakland. But we'll talk about that and much more on the rest of the show today. Remember, visit FanDuel.com backslash locked on to get started. Well, let's start us off, Gabe. Kick us off. What you got with free agency? Well, well, we all know the Vikings. They've been very active this <clears throat> the past two weeks when it comes to free agency. I believe the number is up to double-digit signings from guys from other teams thus far. And uh, so far, I, I think the Vikings have made a lot of chess moves when it comes to filling certain needs. The past few years since I've been there, the Vikings have either had rookies or they've had veterans. Now, when you look at Kwesi and his front office and the guys that they have signed, they've signed a lot of young veterans. So you can bring in some guys that are young and then you can have your three to four year guys that are on their second contracts. Plus, you got Harrison Smith. I believe when you have all three of those levels of age on the team or levels of experience on the team that gives you a lot of flexibility when it comes to having sustained success later in the season the the grading part <clears throat> i would probably give a quick i'll probably give quasi a b plus right now i think there is still a signing out there that quasi and his staff are still going to make that hasn't been signed just yet but when it comes to the jonathan grenards of the world and the andrew van ginkles and uh, the Jihad Wards and the Jonah Williams and just some of these key acquisitions that aren't splashy names, but they make sense in this Brian Flores defense. I believe that is a recipe for success going forward. We know the offense is going to be intact. You got to address the quarterback situation, but you pretty much bring back your starting your entire starting line from last year. You got your tight end back, your two receivers, your running. You designed Aaron Jones, who I think was one of the best free agent signings in, in all of uh, the NFL this year, I, I think that is a recipe for success going forward. Now we see, now we get a chance to see what the Vikings will go when it comes to having two first round picks in the 2024 NFL draft. Do they package the 11th and the 23rd overall pick to move up? Or is the guy that they want the preferred method, according to Quasey, is that at 11 and then at 23? I guess we'll see. Sam, what's your grade on this? Yeah, yeah, I I'm gonna give a solid B. Um, there are some areas where I I I think they're still lacking a little bit, and free agency is not necessarily done, so they still could address them. I don't think they've meaningfully upgraded their defensive tackle position. 
Um, they've really gone value at the interior offensive line, giving Brandle the extension, Dan Feeney. They haven't necessarily meaningfully upgraded. And in fact, if they don't bring Reisner back, I'm not, they may have even downgraded in that area. And they stood pat at tight end. And I can't totally fault them for that, but with CJ Hawkinson hurt, that position group might not be as formidable as it was last year to start the season. So I still think there are some voids kind of in the report card, but I do think they got deeper at edge rush, which is so important. Now you've got two really good edge rushers in Grenard and uh, and Van Ginkle, even though you lose Hunter. I still like having those two bodies on either end. Uh, you go younger at linebacker with Cashman. You're better at running back. You have more depth at cornerback after the Shaq Griffin signing. I like all of those moves. I think there was a lot of value um, applied to Quasi's approach. I thought that he was smart in the way he divvied up the dollars, and they still have a little bit remaining. So I, I'm going to give him a B grade. A lot of those depth signings, they kind of cancel each other out. You know, when you you lose a you lose a guy, you gain a guy for a million dollars, and and it's, I'm not going to get too far into those. But for the high enders that they signed, I think they brought in a lot of good depth and talent guys that are in their their physical primes that'll contribute to this team. And there's still time for him to fill out some of these positions of need. I think that uh, that they're still wanting for. Julia. Yeah, I and I agree with Gabe on um, the age is different than what we've seen, as, you know, since I've been here too, and in, in that there's not so much of a gap between guys with who they picked up in this free agency. I think seven guys on defense so far. Um, so it it's it's like they're filling these holes, but they're they're filling holes for one player that like like Daniil, and they and they, they take a few that can help fill the gap that he had. Um, so it, it's interesting to me. I also have written down a B for the Vikings because I think things are still in limbo right now. Um, we'll have to see what they do moving forward because it is early. But um, I th also think it's interesting that they signed um, – is it is it Gruje Hill? Is that how you say his name? Kamu Gruje Hill? Um, so he's getting back together with uh, Cashman and Grenard. They were all in Texans together. I think it, it'll be interesting to see um, – how well this defense works together with Flores because I, I remember last year going in, we were all kind of like, how's this going to work? Because it is so much chaos, so much organized chaos as everyone called it. So I think it'll be, um, I think we'll have to wait till week three or four of the season to truly know how this free agency worked out for the Vikings, um, especially on the defensive side of the ball. But so far I would say, yeah, uh, I think, the money's been handled well. And I think that they've been able to fill holes. I think that Aaron Jones gave you right in saying that that's one of the best free agent si free agency signings that we've seen so far. He um, will be more explosive at running back than what the Vikings have seen in the past two years. So uh, a plus on that one for sure, but overall I'd give him a B. So for me, I'm going to go A minus, and here's why. It's need versus filling a need. And a lot of times people have needs, and then everybody's like, well, they don't fill it. Now, I give them an A plus for effort because of they just went out and got everything they needed. I'll give them an A minus for execution. Now, as far as how these guys are going to play, that's why they got to get on the field. But you look at the needs. They needed, I, I said this from the long, they needed a corner. They needed more cornerback depth and somebody that's done it where you get Shaq. You got Edge. You lost to Neil Hunter. You lost DJ Wanham. Well, you bring in uh, Van Ginko and Gennard. Filled it. Linebacker. You were going to lose Jordan Hicks anyway. You brought in Blake Cashman, who's younger, stronger, and, and has more upside to his career. You go, you go QB. Now, Sam Darnold, we know is on a down, ten, but down, down stretch of his career, but you still have a chance to draft a cornerback in the first round and who knows, or quarterback, and who knows how high. You look at running back. Well, you got rid of one. You cut one. You bring in Aaron Jones. Who is better? Who has led the NFC North for a while as a running back? Who gives you immediate running back presence in that room with a fullback and CJ Ham? Now, the only spot that they didn't feel, which technically is due to injury, was tight end. But they did re-sign some guys that can, can get you to go where you're going. I think the other one is probably going to be receiver. You lose KJ Osborne. Now they probably need to go find a, either a veteran receiver or just look at the draft. If they can get JJ at 11, you could probably still get a receiver at 23 or in the second round because this receiver core is deep. So there's a lot that I like about what they did, but it was need versus filling the need, and they filled them all, so I'm going to give them an A-. minus. But that does that mean they're going to win the Super Bowl? Does that mean they're going to be closer to winning the Super Bowl? FanDuel, our partner at FanDuel, 
feels like they have the eighth worst chance of winning a Super Bowl. But that's just more of the odds betters, people where they're putting their money. How many people are putting money down on the Vikings versus how many people are putting money on the Chiefs? If you want a long shot, why not put $10 on the Vikings to win a Super Bowl and just let the long shot maybe happen? We've seen it happen. Mattress Mac, we've seen him do it with his Houston teams. He put money on them every year. Eventually, it's got to pay off. He just has way more money to play around with. But we're talking about these, these Super Bowl odds. Sam, what are, what are your thoughts on this? Vikings currently sitting at 85 to 1 to win the Super Bowl. These are the, the only teams they're ahead of. Arizona, New York Giants, Tennessee Titans, Washington Commanders, Denver Broncos, New England Patriots, Carolina Panthers. What's the, the through line? What's the common thread there? All of those teams, or most of those teams, have uncertainty at quarterback, or they just had terrible rosters last year, like Arizona, for instance. Um, but the Vikings at 85 to 1, I I get it. I'll be honest with you. I get it. Because as of right now, your quarterback is going to be Sam Darnold for a full year, or part of the year Sam Darnold, part of the year a rookie, or the whole year a rookie. Whichever way you slice it, the upside on that team on paper might not be that high because rookies are such a crapshoot. Unless you get a CJ Stroud in there who can have an immediate impact and be a rookie of the year candidate, um, you might not have a Super Bowl ceiling in year one of, of this transition year at quarterback. But the Vikings do have that sneaky good roster, and they did not. And you know, you all you all have observed this the same way I have, I think. This has not been a passive free agency. They're trying to load this roster up with talent to win now. I mean, they're not, this is not a rebuilt roster. This is a, a ready to win roster. And that I think actually gives that price some value. And you know what I like even more? Maybe, maybe they won't win the Super Bowl. Okay. But I think the division is still up for grabs. I'm looking at the Vikings right now, plus 750 to win the NFC North, lay down 10, get 75 bucks to win the North. They are by far the biggest underdogs in the division. That's either, I mean, Chicago even, who's going to have a rookie quarterback. They're plus 350. Vikings plus 750. Um, I think that that's actually a pretty good value price on Minnesota, but I understand why there's doubters because they're just unsettled at QB. Julia. Yep. I, um, no one believes in Sam Darnold. They don't think Sam Darnold's going to lead a team to the Super Bowl. That being said, um, having seen what, Kevin O'Connell can do with an older veteran quarterback in Kirk, I think, and also Sam Darnold being reunited with a quarterback's coach that he's familiar with. I, I think we've yet to see what the Vikings can do. Also, it's not surprising that, you know, nationally people aren't putting a Minnesota team on the map. You know, we live this every single day, right? Um, but I, I just think that this team is so different than the past two seasons so different you know you keep your gm you keep your head coach but this roster is completely different um so there's so much uncertainty that people aren't gonna bet on the vikings i mean vikings fans will bet on the vikings but that's probably about it right now so yeah i'd say it's a fair assessment um but I, i'm just so interested to see what kevin o'connell can do with sam darnold should he be the starter and not start a rookie this this season um but yeah i would say as disappointing as it is because there is so much unknown with this team um and we have we don't know what they'll do with the draft either uh that yeah you could say eighth would be fair um especially when it comes to putting your money down on anything so disappointed but not surprised would be my assessment okay yeah, I mean, that means there's, what, 24 teams with a better chance of making the Super Bowl than the Vikings, which is kind of kind of crazy. But you look at the, the 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 unknowns, right? Like the Vikings don't know. we Well, we don't know what the Vikings will look like in 2024, to Julia's point. I think it just comes down to this Kevin O'Connell and Brian Flores believe in their coaching style enough that they have the talent on their roster right now to will this Vikings team to nine or 10 wins to get them to the wild card. I mean, if you look at last year with Kirk out, the Vikings were still in games. Like it's not like they were, you know, getting blown out by teams. Like there, there were still some one score games. I mean, think about the Bengals game last year, you know, 
we throw one less interception, that game is ours. If if we <laughs> if we get a touch push, if we get a yard on, if we get one <laughs> yard on third and inches, like we we win that game. Um, I, I believe there there is some confidence in the the TCO performance center or the Vikings practice that the roster that they have right now is still good enough to get that wild card spot, if not win the division. Yeah, the the Lions, they're going to be Super Bowl contenders again. So I'm not going to be like, yeah, the Vikings will win the NFC North. But I think if you get into that last playoff wild card spot, who knows what it can look like. I, I, my, my major question um, when Kwesi and Kevin got hired was, what model are they going to follow? Kwesi was in San Francisco for, for a while. That's where he started his career. And they built – everything around the quarterback right like they pretty much built every other position made those positions of value so you can put a quarterback any quarterback in that system where they can thrive kevin on the other hand who was in la they pretty much addressed everything through free agency i mean you, you got uh, matthew stafford you, you have a, a offensive line you have uh, jalen ramsey who you who you signed on the defensive side of the ball yeah aaron donald was a drafted guy but free agency i mean what, what's the what's the rams general manager uh, name I can't think of his name off the top of my head. Sneed. Um, Les Sneed, yeah. I mean, after they won a Super Bowl, I mean, he was famous for the, for the quote, F those picks. Like, that's <laughs> that's pretty much um, what the Rams decided to do when they, you know, went to that, went with that Super Bowl route. So it's interesting to see how this 2024 Minnesota Vikings team is starting to shape up because we're starting to see the identity of how Quasey and Kevin want to address their roster. They, they want to do so by adding some young veterans and then put some rookies in key spots so they won't get exposed too much because they have the help on the back end. So I think Kevin and uh, Quasey and Brian Flores, they're pretty, pretty much saying, hey, we're good enough as coaches that if you give us good enough guys, we can do the rest. And Sam, what what's the uh, what's the odds for the Falcons? Do you have that now? Have they updated that? Yep. Falcons uh, were about 30 to 30 to one so the falcons have the 13th best odds to win so this is this is where i'll take this kirk cousins is the the reason kirk cousins is the answer to the the flip because i looked at last year the vikings odds do you know where they were 18th they had the 18th best chance to win the super bowl last year and that's because they had kirk cousins the Falcons were down at the bottom with the Commanders and the other teams. Now we're the, we're the Falcons. They're in the middle of the pack because they're making the Falcons a middle of the pack team because that's how people view the quarterback. And I think one of you said that you're dead on. This Super Bowl odds usually comes down to people betting on what quarterbacks can they trust down the stretch? What quarterbacks can they trust to get them there? You know who they didn't believe in? Brock Purdy. Nobody believed in Brock Purdy at first until Shanahan made them a believer. That's why I think this whole Vikings thing, great, take the odds now because if, if they do get a guy in J.J. McCarthy who comes in or Drake May and comes in and all of a sudden you're like, man, this kid with a coach that knows how to coach an offense and can really be a QB whisperer, the odds go up. But now your money is set at plus 85, at plus 8,500. So I would I would take that bet any day of the week, 100 bucks now is going to pay off later and you just sit on it and wait you put 100 bucks on less stuff and never got anything in return so why not put it on the long shot in the minnesota vikings to win the super bowl uh there you can also bet on who goes to the super bowl you can also bet on making the playoffs so there's a lot of things you can bet on for the vikings vikings making the playoffs i would for sure take that bet as well uh it's worth it but that's the only jump i looked at the vikings last year they were plus four thousand. Mm. now they're plus eighty five hundred. So they were 18th, and now they dropped down to whatever in the in the 20s. Um, Falcons were down in the bottom, and now they're up at I think 14th. When I just looked uh, at at whatever you said, Sam, plus whatever 3,200 yeah, 30, or 3,000. Yep, 3,000. So Ron, it's all quarterback. Yeah, what you got, right? If if you, I mean, let's say you remove the word odds from yep. this sentence and said, well, the, the the Falcons were the 13th best team in the NFL, and the Vikings were the 24th best team in the NFL. In 2024 and kirk was the reason why like where would you rather be 13th or 24th i i would say yeah you 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 didn't drop that far you didn't go that high and you got you got cheaper lower and younger so yeah. i mean yeah, yeah you have to you you have to feel like the vikings might come out on top on that because I, I get where you're going with that and yeah. uh you still have justin jefferson you got aaron jones you got a defensive guys that the one thing i loved about 
like when I met, because you know, I know Gabe Henderson. You guys check out Vikings.com. He sat down with uh with, with Grenard, and uh I got a chance to you know talk to his wife a little bit about it too. And she just talked about like their relationship, like Blake Cashman and Grenard and how young and fun they are mm-hmm. and, and how much fun they like to have on the field. That's what I think Vikings fans are gonna notice too. Training camp for the defense this year is probably gonna have a different feel. It's gonna be youthful, it's gonna be a bunch of young guys running around. Uh Daniel Hunter was great. But he's not like a rah rah, have fun, jump in the huddle type of guy. He's a silent freaking assassin. Like he reminds me of of the dude from the Avengers with the bow and arrow. Like he's in the dark in black, and he's gonna kill you. You just won't see it coming. Grenard and Blake Cashman. Oh, you're gonna know they're there. They're more like the Bash Brothers from 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 uh, Mighty Ducks. They're loud, they're big, but they get their job done. And I think we're gonna see a difference in that. The quarterback's gonna be a little bit different, youthful guy. Uh, Sam Darnold is not the guy I'm talking about. It's the guy they draft. So you're gonna see a lot of differences when you think about Joe Burrow and his the way he quarterbacks with Jamar Chase. I think that's what you're gonna get from Drake May or or JJ McCarthy the way they quarterback with Justin Jefferson. You're gonna have a different feel. And so that's why the odds at 24 versus odds at 13, and the only difference is a quarterback. You know, nothing's really changed for either team, but the Vikings did get younger. I do know that. And so whether it's this year, next year, the year after, we're going to see that come. The San Francisco 49ers found the formula, young quarterback. The Ravens tried to get it. They end up having to pay Lamar Jackson. The the the, the Chiefs got it with Lamar. With Lamar. <laughs> What's his name? Uh, Mahomes. Brit- Mahomes. Brittany, Brittany Mahomes' husband. Mahomes. <laughs> But they got it figured out too. So Jordan Love with the Packers. I mean, they're they're got better. He's younger. They're getting better. So there's a lot to that. So I, I'm definitely excited to see where they go with this. But we got to talk about Anthony Edwards because I keep saying pictures now of uh, like I said, I got the, I played in Anthony Edwards shoes the other day. I finally played in them. Uh, I will say this: you have to warm up first. It takes time to warm up in those shoes. You do not. You cannot just grab them out the car, freezing cold, and think you're going to put up thirty. It took me a while, but I finally started getting loose in them. I like them. Uh, but Anthony Edwards and Michael Jordan, they have a couple things in common. One, shoe sales right now for Anthony Edwards is similar to when the Jordan shoe comes out. It's going quick. Another one, we'll talk about that and much more, but we got a word from our sponsors. Brought to you today by Game Time. Ron Johnson already told you he's going to the Chicago Bulls at United Center next week because he bought the tickets on Game Time. And you, too, can be like Ron Johnson and get tickets to the next big sporting event or music concert or comedy or theater or whatever big event is happening in your area because they've got killer last-minute deals. They've got all-in, low prices, views from your seat, and the best price guarantee. They're taking the guesswork out of buying tickets like nobody else. Um, You can get on the app, and with two clicks, you've got the tickets basically in hand on your phone. Uh, They show you the price. All in, up front, no surprises, and you can get great deals. You can get deals up to the last minute, even an hour after the event starts. You can get zone deals where you pick the section, game time picks the seats for big time savings. And if you find tickets in the same section and row for less with the game time guarantee, they'll credit you 110% of the difference. So take the guesswork out and download the game time app, create an account. Use code locked on for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create that account, redeem code. L O C K E D O N for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. And I'm very frugal, so when I was looking for my tickets, I did go on a couple different sites and vendors. And uh, yeah, Game Time ended up having the most accurate uh, and upfront pricing. I will say the uh, the fees weren't high at all. They were small fees compared to the others. And uh, there was no additional like hidden stuff. They show you the price right away where some people you got to go through all the stuff. And then you find out at the very end what your price is. And you're like, yeah, I'm not paying this. Game time, held it there. It also held the tickets for me until I was out of the, the uh, checked out. And so then I got them emailed to me. They're in my wallet now. They're on my Apple Pay uh, deal. And so now I just got to scan my phone when I get to the it was a United Center, I think is what the Bulls play in. Um, and so, yeah, so when I get to the United Center, uh, we're going to the Bulls Pacers. So the Pacers are pretty good. Uh, so that should be a fun one. I think they lost the in-season or were they the in-season champions? No, they lost the Lakers uh, in-season tournament, second place team. So uh, get a chance to see a little bit of them, uh, the Bulls, but the Bulls are not great. So, but we're going to Chicago, so we got to find something to do. Should be fun. Add it to our bucket list. We've gone to the Suns game. Uh, we've gone to the Pistons game. We've gone to the Tigers game. So now we get to take our kids to a Bulls game. So it's about family time. But game time made it happen. Make sure you guys check it out. Now let's talk about Anthony Edwards and his dad. 
Michael Jordan. Julia, what you got? <laughs> and his dad, Michael Jordan. Well, my first question is Ryan, our producer at Carol, our sports producer at Carol 11. We were, you know, you guys have seen Chet's commercial that's everywhere now. Yeah. Where is Ant's national commercial? I guess maybe he's too locked in on the season to, to make one, but. He hasn't sent um, the video in. He hasn't sent the video yet. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Anyways. Um, yeah. So obviously the comparison, Michael Jordan, what the other day was talking to one of, uh, to a sideline reporter and he talked about the comparison and, and he agreed that you could compare his play and Anthony Edwards play. It all comes down to like the flashiness of it all. Right. The guy makes, he goes viral like once a week at least with something that he does and I think what's interesting about it is it's not just like dunks. It's the other end of the court as well, um, which I feel like is very MJ of him. Now, I will say I'm not like uh, a, a specialist on Michael Jordan because I was a little young to really watch basketball during his time. Um, but I did think this was interesting. I was reading Jim Suhan's article that he wrote about this just a few days ago. And he was talking about how it's always interesting when a smaller size wing can play the way that Anthony Edwards does. He's more human-like. And it, his comparison, he said, was, he posed this question, would you rather root for Spider-Man or Godzilla? Like, who would you rather watch? Because it's more relatable to yourself, right? I think, well, I don't, I'm not going to say Anthony Edwards is relatable to us and your humans, but um, just the way that he like kind of recklessly goes about playing the game makes it so interesting to watch. I mean, that's just sports in general, but Anthony Edwards really has a grip on that. And like Reggie made the point just a few weeks ago about how worried he was that Ant was going to hurt himself doing one of these crazy things that he does during a game. Which is, a, you know, it's a fair assessment, but he does it. He hasn't really, I mean, besides that hip spur that he had earlier this season, I mean, this last third of the season, it's at least once, if not twice a week, that everyone on Twitter is talking about something that Anthony Edwards did. Um, so, yeah, the numbers that he's putting up to, and he's so young. He's still, I think he's 22 still. Um, so we've just seen the beginning. So if he's already getting comparisons to Michael Jordan, I can't, you know, who knows what the future holds for this guy, but, um, the difference between the two, probably his mouth, I would say this, his personality is a little different than Michael Jordan's personality is, but in a good way, he's such a fun guy to cover because you just never know what he's going to say in anything. I, uh, so we'll come back to that one too, because I'm wondering what what do you when you say his mouth is different than Jordan's? What do you mean? Because you might be too young to remember Jordan. I grew up. I am too, no, I mean okay. Well, but Anthony Edwards is like a South Georgia guy, and it is so blatantly obvious when he's in pressers and I don't know. Oh, you just mean like the 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 how they actually the how the words come out of their mouths? Because mm -hmm. as far as like confidence and what they say. It's that's his son. Like I grew up with Michael Jordan. Like I was like the 80s was my era. So Jordan and Anthony Edwards, like the confidence, like the ability to yeah. say he could play any position in baseball. Like he'll play yeah, he'll yeah. tennis. He'll gamble. You know, like the only difference is Jordan was willing to lose a million dollars. Anthony yeah, Edwards Jordan is like is 20. I'm done at 20 grand. I'm done for the night. You think? Yeah. Oh, yeah. They say that, like, Jordan said the same stuff he had. I mean, Jordan didn't have social media, but Jordan had women. That's why he's divorced. <laughs> like, you know, like, like they, they, they that's his son. Now, personality wise, though, like, I, is that kind of where you're going, Julia? Because I don't, I feel like Jordan was a little more serious about that's his business, about winning at all costs. I think Edwards is a little more loosey goosey yes. just in his personality. That's, that's the vibe I that's get. That's what we're talking about. Like the, okay. The so the loosey goosiness. Okay. Yes. The way that he like, will just in the middle of a press, it could be crunch time for whatever. And Ant's just going to make a joke about something or, you know, I don't know how to, I can't think. Of yeah. That's it's, it's, that's the TikTok kid in them. That's, that's a different era yeah, of kid yeah, now. It is. It's him like, being a 22 year old. Which is why, yeah. which is why a lot of grown up athletes hate these young athletes because right. it's, it's just different. Guys are coming in and doing TikToks before games like Juju Smith Schuster, whereas Jerry, Jerry Rice 
would never worry about his videos and being in a football house in the off season and yeah. making content. It's like it's just, yeah, it's a different kid. Yeah. Like I could see that. Okay. I see what you're saying, but it's, yeah, that's definitely the era. We didn't like, they didn't have that, but as far as confidence and saying like, what's on your mind no, and who should take the big not. shot. They're definitely yeah, yeah. yeah. Lucy goosey. Anthony Edwards is definitely way more like fun. Lucy goosey. When I'm at a presser for Anthony Edwards, everyone is laughing almost the entire time. Yeah. Because of the things that people were said. scared of Michael Jordan. <laughs> like, let's right. be real. See, that's, that's the part about <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, he is. I say Anthony Edwards seems more and more approachable. Um, but the thing is, too, though, I will say this. We didn't get to see the young Jordan. The young Jordan did right. get a chance to grab the mic because nobody cared about young Jordan. And uh, if you watch Isaiah Thomas's deal, I mean, even though he's a little bit petty right now about it, he's speaking truth. Like nobody cared about Michael Jordan when Larry Bird, Magic Johnson, and Isaiah was running the league. When Jordan finally beat them in the 90s, then everybody put a microphone in his face. Like, because every other game he's losing, he's walking out the stadium. Like, all right, Bulls lose to the Pistons. Bulls lose to the Celtics. Bulls lose to the Pistons. Like, he did that for years and years and years. And then finally in the 90s, he got over the hump, beat him, and then three-peated, three-peated. Uh, but that's that's the difference. Like, nobody cared about 22-year-old Michael Jordan because you had Larry Bird, Isaiah, Magic. It was different. Now the league doesn't have a star, and we need one. And Jordan has given them the crown. So, Gabe, you're from North Carolina. Jordan has just said, I'll say his quote, he said, I can see a lot of similarities in his game to mine. The two comparisons to Michael Jordan is one day he could be as good or as better. That's where LeBron is always compared to Jordan, not because of stylistic play, but because of how they play. Broussard said this on first take. He also said, uh, then there's a game similarity. The great Anthony Edwards, I think, can be the best American player, maybe the face of the league, at least American players. Uh, he's not ever going to be the GOAT because of blah, 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 blah. Uh, but the similarities, like Jordan is saying, like the way he carries himself, the band on his leg, the way he does his turnaround, the way he attacks the rim, the way he can get up above the rim. Jordan sees some similarities there. Even in his shot, it's a similar release on his jumper. Gabe, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, they even look alike, you know, and they put like the little, <laughs> the, the face side by side and they give like Michael Jordan, Anthony Edwards hair. And then, oh, yeah, give Anthony Edwards a brush cut. It's just like, man, like, be, are, are we sure? <laughs> that Michael Jordan, you know, was, was you know, with his wife during that time. When Anthony Edwards Have we seen <laughs> Anthony Edwards' dad? Has he ever been to a Timberwolves game, Julia? I've, 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 I've seen I mean, you, you I mean, that Edwards' dad? Run. Go ahead, my bad. No, I Have haven't, you? but I look. Have you seen his dad, Gabe? Anthony Edwards? Uh, I mean, but, you know, people say they, they've never seen LeBron's dad either, right? True. <laughs> which is so, very true that is true where is that dude at like that dude's missing out on billions right now <laughs> yeah because look at this well yeah that's the jordan that. yeah that's the jordan yeah. That, yeah they look alike like yeah so i don't know but gay where are you going with it six five six six um <laughs> I, I just i just think the thing is with me like i haven't watched enough anthony Edwards this year simply because you know having a newborn i'm going to sleep early so somebody has to somebody has to send me a video of anthony edwards uh you know what's actually going on for me to actually know what's what's happening i've been to a couple of games but look th this guy is, is is front office like he, he's well he's box office like he he he's in one of the the smaller markets so he doesn't get the the credit that he deserves i'm, I'm glad that minnesota is starting to get a little bit more publicity but put Anthony Edwards in uh, L.A. or Chicago or, you know, a, a major market like this. This guy is a superstar. He is the face of the league. And we're not having a conversation of is Anthony Edwards the face of the league? Um, I'm still a little salty at Michael Jordan, you know, being a, a North Carolina guy. Uh, I think it was what the 2020 draft or 2019. What are those drafts when the Hornets had the third overall pick and they had an opportunity to move up to the first overall pick? to get Anthony Edwards, yet they stayed at three and they signed LaMelo Ball. LaMelo Ball is a really good player, but we could have had Anthony Edwards. So I'm still a little salty about that. Us North Carolinians are always salty about Michael Jordan moves outside of him actually being on the court. So I'm, I'm happy for Anthony Edwards. I think there there are some comparisons that are rightfully in the, the right you know regard when it comes to those two, but still until 
Ant starts to win some of those big games and, you know, make it to the second round or the Western Conference, it's still kind of hard for me to put him in the same conversation as MJ. Like, I'm, I'm young enough to not really have seen all of Michael Jordan's career, but I'm old enough to understand who Michael Jordan is and who he was to the game of basketball. So, I mean, Michael Jordan is my goal. Like, I, I, I grew up watching him, but at the same time, I understand what LeBron has done for the league. So I, I just can't put him – like, being a basketball guy, like, being from the hoop state of North Carolina, like, I can't put – Anthony Edwards in that same conversation until he starts to win some of those big games. Um, But respect to what he's done. I think he's flashy. He can, you know, sell tickets. He's, he's tough. He's gritty. Uh, He has no filter. Um, Like the guys just, I mean, the the little ass, ah, like after watching him duck on my boy, like that, that, that's like, you don't, you don't get that from players in the nba today like that self-awareness in the moment like i i I love to see it and i think anthony edwards is you know the 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 oncoming of the next great basketball player in the league but until he starts to win this is just a conversation for for you know another day yeah like let's remember that michael jordan in year four was mvp defensive player of the year and averaged 35 points a game in a climate where teams did not score that many points and didn't shoot threes. Jordan was an atrocious three-point shooter early in his career. He was like 15%, and he never tried them. So he's doing that all with two-point shots in a climate where final scores were like 90 to 80 regularly. Mm-hmm. Michael and Jordan he played all 82 games, too. Michael Jordan didn't. Yeah, he didn't take load management days. He played every day. So like, I see flashes of it in... Edwards mid-range and when he gets to the rim and contorts himself to finish layups he's he's very Jordan-esque in that way but Jordan delivered that night after night after night after night with reckless and relentless abandon um I think Anthony Edwards shows that in flashes but doesn't have the day after day killer instinct of Jordan who in his fourth year was doing things that the league couldn't even fathom. Um, you know how many guys are averaging 35 points per game this year where scoring is like at an all-time high? None. No one's doing it. Jordan did it when people were like lucky to score 20 a game. Uh, so it's just a different... It, it, you can't move the goalpost too much when you're comparing to Jordan. I mean, there, no one is Jordan, at least not yet, uh, because he was revolutionary. And this is where I go with that, Sam. I, I do agree. I'm not going to hate on Jordan because you are right like when you look up the 87 88 season Jordan like he was you could see his ascension like he was becoming that guy um you know assists uh um points per game leader and 35 points like you said like all that stuff and but but in the east when you look at sorry and so the, the way the divisions too they were weird like the, the Bulls had to deal with the Pistons but when you look at the east the Celtics the Bullets the Knicks uh, the Pistons, Bulls, Hawks, Bucks, Cavs all made the playoffs. And in the West, you had the Nuggets, Dallas, Utah, Houston. And so when you think about those teams, in 88, the Bulls didn't get it done. The Bulls weren't the best team. So, yes, he was a scoring champion doing all this stuff. But at the same time, he hadn't started to win just yet. So that's why, even though Anthony Edwards has the top three team in the NBA right now, I think this is going to be the key. And Gabe is right. Can he win? Can he find a way? Now, again, the two guys, his two main guys, plus his other big Nas Reed are hurt. Can he find a way? We're going to talk to Michael Grady next week about this because they're going to have a two games over this past, over this weekend, and then we'll get Michael Grady up next week, Tuesday, because that's going to be the key. Heading into playing the Nuggets again, what can Anthony Edwards do? What has he learned? Can he learn how to win that game against a team like the Nuggets without all the weapons he has? Michael Jordan needed Scottie Pippen. People forget that. It took him to get Scotty before they start really taking over on the East. Does Anthony Edwards have it right now with Carly Towns, or is it time to find him a Scotty Pippen? And I think that's the key. But it, but Anthony Edwards' game, from a basketball perspective, purely, just turn, shoot, catch, run, crossover, dribble, step back, isolation, he has it. And the one thing Jordan didn't have, and, I'm, and this might be blasphemous. I'm sorry, people. Jordan did not hit his head on the rim. Jordan did not do the step back. Now, the step back wasn't really 
out until Allen Iverson. So let's let's be real. Let's let's think about that. Nobody realized I could take two steps backwards. Nobody Euro stepped either back then in the 80s. Like it's a different game now because it's evolved. Now, if you put those same athletes and give them these skills, yes, Magic Johnson, Larry Bird, Michael Jordan, they get it done. But Euro step, they would have had the 80s in a in a in a world where like, what was that? You're supposed to lay it up on the right side of the basket. Where are you going, young man? It's different. Anthony Edwards is a different beast. But yes, Michael Jordan is for sure the GOAT because he won. He won six championships, and that's where we're always going to go to. Um, but speaking of basketball, speaking of championships, there's a championship going on in Locked On Sports Minnesota right now, or Locked On Sports, with uh, the brackets. I am currently like 21st, so I I, I got to make it up. Now, there are some weird points in this one. If, if you pick upsets, you get those points for the upsets of where they were at. Uh, I'm, I have two brackets. I'm in ESPN, me and Gabe are in one with our friend Carlton and his group of guys. He played basketball at Stanford. So we're in that one. Uh, I'm doing a little bit better in that one because I, 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 I kind of went with like my heart of like Davidson or sorry, Dayton, uh, winning. Uh, I went with my heart. Like, I think I picked like Florida. I picked, um, another one that I didn't think was going to get pulled out and they did it, but I'm annoyed because in the locked on one, I picked Nevada, Nevada was winning. And then the they biggest lost. Joke of the day, the biggest oh my joke God. of the day, by far, unbelievable incompetency down the stretch. I, I'm like I was, a 10 C is about yeah. to pull this off. And by the way, I can't. People can't see my office. I have to t- post a video on uh, Twitter after the show once the show's posted for people to see. But I got my computer. I got two computers. I got my work computer. I got one computer with one game. I got my iPad over here with another game. And I got my TV over here with another game. So I literally have picture and picture and picture. And then I even have my living room TV on when I walk out my office because just in case I go to have some food, I want to have, I do, I did the four way. So if you guys go on one mm-hmm. of the apps, I'm um, not going to promote them. They're not paying us, but you go on one of the apps, they have a four way. You get four games. It doesn't look great on your iPad because there's four small games, but on your TV, it's awesome. And you get all four games on your TV. It's like four small TVs on a 70 inch screen. Awesome. So I put that in the living room. So then when I'm out there and I'm grabbing a snack or I'm on the phone, I got four games at once if they're playing. This is the best weekend of my life. Like I love this weekend. This is the best. My daughter has volleyball starting the day at two o'clock. I'm going to be down there with my phone and a charger with most of the dads. I'm pretty sure downtown Minneapolis at the convention center <laughs> uh, because it's the one of the biggest tournaments in the in the of the year. Uh, it's hosted here in Minnesota because Northern Lights is one of the number one teams in the country and they're in Minnesota. Um, and they hosted this weekend It's the qualifier for nationals, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be a bunch of dads in the hotels looking for TVs. Like I already talked to one dad. He's from Michigan. His team's up here. He's like, yo, we're staying at the Marriott, man. Come through. We're at the bar watching the game. So that's what dads are going to be doing. Moms, they're going to be cheering on the girls. Dads, we'll be on the phones. We'll be watching our daughters. We're going to be watching basketball. So let's talk about the brackets. Sam, you're in this bracket with locked on sports. I'll have Gabe go to his in a minute with ESPN, but Sam, how is your bracket doing? Yeah, so I cast a very wide net with first round upsets um, because I think that you're seeing them more and more every year. We're seeing more 14s, 15s, even a couple 16s have won in recent years. And I, and especially in our system where you get incentivized to pick the upsets and get the seed bonus, I took a lot of them. So I got Oakland. I got Oakland against Kentucky. I thought Kentucky was a little bit over overvalued. You don't so want to share I, that with me? You don't want to share that info? Uh, it was propri- secret proprietary info that only I had. Um, <laughs> so I got, to, I got to rejoice in that, and I also got to, to be devastated last night, and I stayed up till midnight to watch this. I had Samford over Kansas, yes. and I am still livid at the officials for calling the a foul on, on the a, block. Clear, a clear, clean block. Samford would have had the ball. They would have had numbers going the other way, down by one with 10 seconds left. They should have won that game against Kansas, so still bitter. So did I have a great day? No, I think I went 10 out of 16, but I got some big upsets. I got Oregon. uh, I got Michigan State. Almost had Nevada like you, Ron. Should have had Nevada. Came close on Drake. Came close on Samford. But I only lost one Sweet 16 team. And that's really where you win these things is with the Elite Eight and the Sweet 16. Yep. So most of that is still intact for me. So I'm, I'm feeling confident going into Friday. Yeah, and, and that's the one I was, I, was, I was torn between Oregon 
in uh, South Carolina. I, I fell too much in love with South Carolina during their tournament. I watched the game and I shouldn't have because they look really good. And I'm like, Oregon lost some players to the NBA. They lost some players to the transfer portal. Uh, Illinois, I don't know if you guys know Dane Danger. Uh, he's a kid from Park Center. Park he Center. is the yep. He's the big center for Illinois. So I picked Illinois because he was at Baylor, won a national championship with Baylor, and then he hit the NIL portal, and now he's at Illinois helping them win a Big Ten championship. And now, I mean, if you watched the game the other night or other day yesterday, he is dominant. That boy finally is doing what you're supposed to do with six nine two fifty. Because in high school, at six nine two forty, Gabe, that boy shot threes. He never went to the basket. The, the worst use of, of size I've ever seen in high school history. And they didn't win because they didn't win the state championship that year because he wanted to stay out top and shoot threes. Now, if you watch him now, his coach is like, get your big butt down there and dominate. And that's what you saw in Dane Danger, Illinois. Uh, but before we get to Gabe and Julia, we got a word from FanDuel because, of course, FanDuel in the NCAA tournament right now is buzzing. You go to the FanDuel app, you can see all the current bets, who's betting on what and how many bets are coming in. It is absolutely buzzing sam tell us a little bit more about fanduel will do fanduel is the place to go if your bracket is busted doesn't matter you can still bet every single ncaa tournament game at fanduel america's number one sports book probably could have gotten a nice little money line on oakland yesterday i wish i had done that because i had them in the bracket uh, that was a big whiff on my part, but new customers get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. So make sure you win that bet. Make sure you're confident in that money line. Win that $5 bet, get the 200 and then you can have a lot of fun. The point spreads, the over-unders, the money lines, and even the future champion. FanDuel.com slash locked on. It's the most wonderful time of the year in college hoops. It is March Madness. You can bet until they cut down the nets at America's number one sports book, FanDuel Sportsbook app, fanduel.com slash locked on. And now we go to the sixth place, Julia Daniels. How's your bracket doing? I can't, I was just checking the standings. I was like, wow, okay, not <laughs> bad. Um, didn't have the BYU upset, obviously. Um, well, I don't know why. I, when I mentioned that in the sports office, they were like, why would you, why would you expect BYU to, you know, whatever. Um, let's see what other ones, obviously I didn't, I didn't have, I didn't pick Oakland like Sam. Sorry. didn't have that insight. Um, <laughs> who else do we have? I did pick Drake. Uh, Drake. So that was stupid. And I, I don't picked know that I, one too. Cause I yeah. thought Drake in Iowa state, they're in state. That seemed like that'd have been a great next right. round game. Yeah. And I don't know why I, bet against Izzo in uh, March. That was stupid, too. I picked Mississippi State over Michigan State. Looking back, I'm like, okay, why did I do that? Um, I did have Dayton. I did pick Dayton. Um, who else? That's it. My my Midwest region is perfect so far, and we'll see how my tide does tonight. But uh, bracket's not as busted as I would expect it to be. I'm usually <laughs> – pretty bad with this and i think like in my family one last year i i think i ended up last place because obviously i picked the tide to win and then they got knocked out in the sweet 16 um so let's hope that doesn't happen again i do have uh i do have my tide in the final four <laughs> but i have the clones winning it all so i saw that i saw that gabe so before you get to your sam did you have duquesne is how you say it i did not have duquesne because like Arif did. I don't know if anybody else did, but Arif Hassan, give leave it up to Arif to figure that one out. He had Duquesne well, over BYU. Well, the all didn't all the elevens win? NC State won, Oregon yeah. won, Duquesne won, and then I don't know if there's another one today, but all the elevens have beaten the sixes. Clemson, wow. New Mexico. Ryan Arthur was like, Oh yeah, I picked Duquesne. Yeah, Clemson, New Mexico was left, yeah. and I picked Clemson. Oh, okay. So hopefully Clemson R can Richard break. Richard Pitino is not going to win at first round NCAA tournament game. Trust me. But see, I picked – so I don't know if anybody watched – I don't know if you guys watched the uh, North Carolina versus North Carolina State. I'm pretty sure Gabe did. Mm -hmm. I picked NC State because of that. If you watch that big boy play against North Carolina, he, he handled – he handled them. What's it's 6'9". Name? I don't even – he's like 6'9", 260 or something. 270. He might, he might be 300. Is he three? He might be. He, yeah. He's big. And he handled Baycott. Baycott. Armando Baycott could not get around that frame. And when I saw that, I'm like – they should at least be able to win one game. So I did pick them. I got that one right. Oregon let me down. Uh, but Gabe, how's yours look? Because I know in, in in the ESPN one, I will say with our group, 
I think I'm third. So how are yeah. you doing in that one? Yeah, I think Ron's uh Ron's handle is enough said three. <laughs> N U F F underscore yeah. said oh, yeah. underscore three. I was like, man, who is this? And then I was like, oh, that's gotta be Ron. So uh I'm I'm like either in last place or second to last place in all my brackets. And my saving grace right now is my Tar Heels. And you know, like it's one of those things where my my Midwest bracket is probably the best. So I think I had in the Midwest, I got tennis, I had Tennessee beating St. Peter's. But I had Colorado State. No, I had Texas beating Colorado State. So, uh, no, no, no. I had Colorado State beating Texas. Yeah. I thought that was gonna be and they scored half. 11 in the first half, and you're like, what are we yeah. doing here? I had, um, I had them too. I had Oregon beating South Carolina, <laughs> Creighton beating Akron, Kansas beating Sanford. But I had McNeese State beating Gonzaga. Like, I thought, you know, this was a down year for Gonzaga. I was like, you know what? Like, but McNeese. You, you win some, you lose some. I got Gonzaga beating Kansas. Ooh. Same. That's, that's that's not a that's not a hot take. Um, Kansas is kind of kind of under underperforming. They got a couple of injuries right now. I, I did have, have NC State. Go ahead. I have Gonzaga beating Kansas. I do okay. have. I will say, hey, Gabe, you like this? I have in my family bracket. I have North Carolina winning it all. Julia, that's that's a really good pick. I think that's a great pick. <laughs> great uh-huh. pick. We got Gabe Henderson. He would be our number one pick to Locked On Sports Minnesota. We got Sam Ekstrom. I would for sure take him in the second round. And we got Julia Daniels. I don't know. She'd be a preferred free agent walk. No. Wow. <laughs> wow. Shots fired. Julia for sure would be up there at our top We're draft picks as well. up to get Julia. <laughs> we definitely are yeah. trading up to get Julia. We got a package of two seconds and a third to get to Julia because uh, she's going to go late in the first round. But I'm Ron Johnson. I want to thank you guys for joining us today on this beautiful snowy friday in march uh wherever you're listening from as well hope the weather is better for you thanks for every day as i continue to like download and share make sure you subscribe we're we're getting to the numbers we want to get to we just need you guys to keep subscribing we thank you for that but 24 7 you can get locked on sports minnesota on youtube on our youtube channel that's wild wolves vikings and of course ncaa right now thank you have a great week